regime from 1565 to 1898 reshaped the face of Philippine music. The singing of the exploits of epic heroes and the rhythms of the native drums and gongs retreated before the chants of the Christian church and the harmonies of the organ, harp, and guitar. In order to clear the way for the Christian faith, the missionaries of the Spanish king sought first to eradicate the sounds and sights of the old rituals among those they converted. As a whole, the performance of native music was discouraged so that much of this has now disappeared and only a very few have survived in altered form. <laughs> Even as they suppressed the native music, the missionaries doubled their efforts at teaching European religious music to the new Christians, who proved to be both adept and enthusiastic in learning the plain song, the flute, the harp, and the guitar. Fifty years after the conquest, the church had already established schools for teaching the Indios the music of the new faith. In 1601, the first orchestra was organized by the Augustinians in Guadalupe. By 1609, there were already, according to Morga, fine choirs of chanters and musicians, especially around Manila. In monasteries and churches, the first sounds of the Christian church that the Indio heard was Gregorian chant, an austere, unaccompanied monophony or plain chant, which was established by Pope Gregory I in the 6th century AD. Eight times each day, at fixed hours, the public chanting of psalms, hymns and canticles in this style was observed all over the Christianized islands. By the middle of the 18th century, a full-fledged conservatory of music, the Colegio de Niños Tiples de la Santa Iglesia Catedral, had been established in Manila. Solfeggio, vocalization, composition, organ, and strings were taught. Graduates of the Colegio brought the new methods into every Christianized province of the country, thus standardizing church music in the islands. Aside from Gregorian chant, more elaborate music in harmonic styles was also performed for high masses during festival days. Often, this music was accompanied by instrumental ensembles led by the queen of church instruments, the pipe organ. 
Many organs were imported from Spain, like that of the old church of Santo Domingo in Intramuros, which supposedly possessed a fine double open diapason on the pedals, its longest pipe rising 18 feet above the floor. were manufactured locally. In 1818, a native organ made of bamboo was constructed in Las Piñas by the Recollects under the direction of Father Diego Serra. 950 pieces of bamboo were used and great care was taken to ensure the proper treatment of the fragile material. The builders had to wait until the proper season to cut the wood, which they then buried beside the sea for half a year to ensure durability. An outstanding graduate of the Agustinian Colegio and premier composer of original Filipino liturgical music was Marcelo Adonai of Pakil, Laguna. Beginning as a sacristan in the San Agustin Church at age eight, he became maestro di capella and director of the church orchestra by 1870. example of Adonai's style is the Benedictus, performed and sung by the composer's grandson. musical practices related to the Christian calendar developed, tolerated, but not necessarily sanctioned by the church. Light and popular, this type of music was played by ordinary folk who traveled through the towns during festive seasons, singing, dancing, and playing various instruments. Region, the pastores appear at Christmas time singing the Villancico, a traditional Spanish Christmas song in 6 8 time. Folk musicians, however, often alter the rhythms, as in this example from Camalig, where the Villancico melody is performed to march and waltz time.
November 1st, the day for the dead, the Mangangaluluwa of Tiaong Quezon, wandering spirits of the dead, carol from house to house, begging for alms and playing pranks, especially on stingy house owners. Nang si Jesus ay dakipin sa halaman na ng kuli, ang itinali ay baging tanika lang may patalim. Nang si Jesus ay iupon sa isang hamak na bangko, ang patang ay isang tambo inuoy binibiro. devotion in Kanaman, Camarines Sur, is the Lagaylay. Here, flowers and songs are offered to the Holy Cross by young women singing vocal duets in thirds to the accompaniment of the organ and guitar. The traditional Easter Sunday Salubong celebrates the start of the joyous Easter season. sing antiphonal alleluias in Walt's time. In Christian Philippines, there remain practices of a ritual character that exist with or without church approval. Perhaps the most widespread of these practices which exhibit both Asian and Spanish influences is the pabasa, a public chanting of the Passion, or long verse narrative on the life and death of Jesus Christ, found in almost every major Christian Philippine language. <laughs> entire season of Lent, groups of singers come together in homes and makeshift chapels to sing the five-line stanzas of the Passion, an activity that usually lasts at least 12 hours. Called Pabasa, or simply Passion, these events are held in fulfillment of Panata, vows made to Jesus Christ in exchange for favors sought by or bestowed upon singer, 
host, their kin, and community. The style of chanting varies, not only from region to region, but even from town to town. Some melodies, also called punto, resemble plain chant. Others are borrowed from popular songs and sung in two or three part Western harmony. are accompanied by instruments playing chordal ostinatos. The vocal timbres and the ornamentation of the melodies, however, suggest an earlier pre-Spanish tradition. Catholic Philippines, but these are localized and limited in scope. One ritual where the Spanish element is strongly evident is the Sayao of Makati, performed annually in fulfillment of personal vows in honor of San Pedro and San Pablo. The flavor is definitely Asian in the Sanghyang of Cavite, which invokes Christian saints and spirits of nature with chants and food offerings. These are invoked by the Mag Sanghyang in unmetered chant, half spoken and half sung. Bakit ba laging nakakalimot kung hindi si Alfredo alalahanin naman ni kumpadreng Alfonso? As the ritual music of the native religion was mixed with the music of the new faith, so the many forms of indigenous secular music assimilated elements of European secular genres. The joyous songs for greeting guests in the northern cordillera are kin to the Berso Golpiado of Cagayan Valley. 
This traditional greeting song in triple time is accompanied by a cinco cinco guitar, which strums out chord progressions reminiscent of Western harmonies. This together now song expresses the desire for unity in a nation so that peace and harmony might prevail. Para pare fun pagayo ye id daga atam ara mawag daga fui pagka idu idu tam ballads relating historical events, heroic deeds, or humorous anecdotes may still be found in Hispanized areas. This composo in triple time, which tells of Typhoon Undang and its disastrous effects on the people of Rojas City, shows even more clearly the influence of Western melody and harmonic progression. The most famous of all hybrid song forms and styles is the Kumintang. Sino kaya sa In the 19th century, Filipino writers referred to it as the national song. Originating from Batangas, a province known in early times as Kumintang, it was actually a regional variant of the Awi, a song in slow, triple time. Cast in the plosa verse, or quatrains with 12 syllables to align, the texts dealt mainly with love and courtship, although more general topics, such as the hypocrisy and the follies of man, were also touched upon. In the mountains of Batangas today, singers still perform the awit in styles derived from the kumintang. The sinilangan, a faster, brighter version of the awit, is a valuable link to an ancient tradition. music from Spain also made an impact in the form of light, popular songs and dances. The Spanish school system cultivated in the native and mestizo elite a taste for the Italian operas such as Aida and Spanish sarsuelas such as Jugar con Fuego brought to the islands by visiting troops from Europe, especially after the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. Familiarity with European forms became a mark of gentility. Young women of good breeding were expected to play European waltzes, habaneras, and mazurkas at a piano or harp, and sing popular arias at informal parties called tertulias. late 
19th century, musical groups were formed all over Christian Philippines by musicians like Ladislao Bonus. These ensembles of string instruments were known as rondalias or comparsas. The standard repertoire of such groups included the balse or waltz, an Austrian dance in lilting triple time, the danza, a slow Spanish dance in duple time, and the polka, a lively bohemian dance in duple meter. Songs and dances modeled on the original European forms developed. The most famous of these was the Kundiman. <laughs> a lyrical song in moderate triple time. It is divided into two or three sections that may or may not be in different keys. The texts of the songs are usually about romantic love, although love of country and sorrow over the loss of a loved one are also common themes. To the 19th century Tagalog, the Kundiman was the very soul of the beloved motherland. Another ensemble that was to have considerable impact on the music of Spanish Philippines was the brass band. The first bands were organized to provide marching music for the military. In time, this music was also used for major civic parades and functions, as well as religious festivals and processions. As the band grew in popularity, civic organizations and even prominent families would organize bands for their pleasure. At serenatas held on the eve of a town fiesta, Competing bands would show off their technical prowess and dexterity, as well as their knowledge of the band repertoire, which would include marches and overtures from operas by famous Italian composers to the delight of the audience. of the band that deserves some mention is the Musicum Bumbong. Some local accounts state that these groups were the result of attempts by 19th century nationalists and revolutionarios to create a uniquely Filipino sound. These experiments led to these all bamboo ensembles built along the lines of the marching band and playing band music composed by Filipino composers. The members 
members of the St. Anthony Original Bamboo Band of Tonsuya, Malabon, Rizal, are fourth-generation descendants of a band of Katipunero musicians who organized a musikong bumbong ensemble in 1896. Here, they play their theme piece, Veteranos de la Revolucion. Thank you. 